Hey, I'm Adam Chaim. And I'm Shoshana Chaim, and we are Propelled, Propelled by, by Plants. Plants. Today we bring to you episode 337, starting the new year with your one word. Today we're going to be talking about your one word. What is a one word, um, how to make a one word, how to go forth with one word, and we'll share some of our experience with one word as well. The idea behind this is that 9 out of 10 people are going to fail their resolutions this year, or 2020 and 50% of the people will fail it by the end of January. So instead of setting yourself up for failure, how do you give yourself inspiration all year long? Yeah, so it's the end of the decade. 2019 is closing out. You're listening to this with New Year's coming up. So happy New Year to everybody. Wish you all the best and hopefully you'll be able to pull a couple of great tips and techniques from today's short discussion on choosing your one word and making 2020 the best you possibly can. So we're going to get into how to do your own one word. But before we do, because this is a condensed version today, because you have all your holiday celebrations going on, we will do our moment of gratitude just like this. All right. Okay, so let's change it up. You go first. Let's do it. I'm grateful for... Russ, who's been playing ping pong so well lately, and he actually beat me for the first time the other day. And that's pretty cool because he's come such a long way, and I'm just grateful to be able to play with him. I'm grateful because I have really seen a pattern in Sage where when I show up and I do the right things and I take breaths before I react and I take her shopping with me for groceries, I start to see her vocabulary change. I start to see her thinking process change and I start to see her catching me on things as well. So what I've really noticed lately is how influential we really are with our children. And I'm grateful that I got that little uh, reminder because it can go a really long way. Yeah, and so take a moment today for yourself to just do a little reflection and give yourself a moment of gratitude because whenever you give yourself that moment of gratitude, it just allows you to be present and allows you not to focus on anything that's coming up in the future or the past, just in the present moment. And do the listeners realize that this is closing out our five-year podcasting milestone? They may not. Well, I might, they might now. <laughs> now they know. <laughs> so that is super, super cool. And like Adam said before, we're going to drive into the new year with one word. And um, it's really a big trend that's going on now. I think it became very popular when John Gordon put out his book, uh, One Word. One word. <laughs> what? It's got a whole long name. Let me check it out for you. One word that will change your life right? So one word that will change your life. And it's something that we've been doing for a while. And I tried to look up how this tradition actually started. And what I came up with was in 1971. Um, it's a German tradition for the cities to vote on one word or something like that. I couldn't get I couldn't get the just of it. But that really wasn't the important part. The important part is how it's really changing people's lives now. So what was your one word last year? My one word was value and my purpose behind choosing that word was because I decided that I wanted to start providing more value to everything I did and everybody that I came in contact with. And so bringing value allowed me to make more of an impact on everything that I was doing and that was the ultimate goal for last year. And do you feel like it has actually helped you move as a, and grow as a person? Of course. I think that it put my mindset into a perspective of everything that I did. What was the person I was interacting with getting out of it? What was the value that I was able to bring to them? And in return, what value would I gain from it? Do you feel like you're done with your word? I don't think so. I'm never, never <laughs> done with my word. I mean, value is something I'm going to always want to provide. And that's something that's going to help build and lean into the next year. What was yours? So my word was accountability. What mm. I wanted was accountability to myself, accountability to my family, accountability to my business, to my friends, because I am a project starter. And I wanted to be starting projects that I was going to finish. And it's not that, I mean, and I, I think people who, uh, who are listening to the show who have worked with me, they're like, what do you mean you're not accountable? It's not that I wasn't accountable. It's that um, I, I give myself so many tasks to do and I put so much pressure on myself that I really wanted to think through 
what I was doing and making sure that if it was a project worth doing that I was carrying it out through to the end. And I don't actually feel like I'm 100% finished with my word in terms of what I wanted to achieve. However, having said that, I think when you choose these words and they stick with you all year, they they become part of you. They become ingrained. It's part of your word family. It becomes maybe. your building blocks to move forward. So does that mean that your word next year is going to be finished? No, my word next year is definitely <laughs> not going to be finished. Well, you might want to consider that if you're a starter and not a finisher, you might want to finish. Um, Things to think about. Yeah, I think when I when I choose my word this year, I want my word to be something that somebody would say about me. Not that I'm doing it for other people, but I want I want people to feel this word within me and finisher is something that I, I can work on myself but I don't think that has to be my word it, like I wouldn't want that word on my tombstone that's a little yep sad but you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah right so um when you choose your word what's really important and you know we we had a little I had a little conversation um with a friend of mine Jessica because this is really something that that she talks about a lot so I said if you had a couple of suggestions um, what would you bring to the table? So she said that choosing a word doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get it, right? It's not like an opportunity. So if your word is money, it doesn't mean that money is going to start falling into your lap. Or if you choose joy, it doesn't mean that you're only going to have joy in your life, but it's more of an awareness that you have around you and it pre presents more opportunities. So it's almost like, you know, the secret. It, it's like putting something out into the universe. And if you put out or, or when we got the green car, right? When we got the green machine, all of a sudden we started to see other cars in our color where we had never seen that before because it, it you become aware of it. So it's not that it's a, if you choose a word, it's not that it happens. It's that you're bringing that opportunity to yourself. Right. So there's so many good possible words for people to choose, but how do they actually decide what word is going to fit their lifestyle at the time? So, I mean, there's a lot of different methods that you could go through. We'll go through John Gordon's method and then we'll go through something a little bit more actionable. But what's also important to remember is that um, if your word is too challenging for you, then it's not a good word for you. But also if your word is not challenging enough, I mean, if, if your word is um, giving, but you already give, let's say, multi-million dollars to, to certain charities, maybe you need to branch out into another area that's going to help you grow. And it doesn't just have to be, I mean, so I gave some money opportunities. It doesn't have to be specific for one area of your life. It should be for all over. So John Gordon, do you want to talk about what he says? So John says, you got to look within yourself. You got to really think about how this word is going to impact you from the inside, what it does to your personal heart and what you need to focus on in your life. And by focusing on what you need to focus on, it's going to start to develop a sense of a structure of words that are going to come into your mind. And that's the first thing that you would do. The second thing he says is that you would look up to God and ask for help and God will start or presenting the universe. the universe, would start presenting these words to you and it'll just show up in your life a little bit more. And then you're going to look out into the world around you and you're going to go ahead and just start to do what that word is going to bring for you. So that's very philosophical and it's hard to really make that concrete. So what can we do to make that really structured so that people could actually come up with their words on their own? Right. So what I did is I compiled a list or we compiled a list of things that we've done before, things that we've heard of that have worked for other people because just because it works for us doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So what I would suggest is carving out some time to work on your word. And in that time, you're going to reflect, you're going to journal, you're going to make lists. And what you're going to think about is things that have happened in the past or things that are happening to you now that have been good, that have been bad. What have you achieved? What do you feel? Where do you feel like you can grow, uh, whether it's from a family point of view or um, a business point of view or a helping point of view what or, or personal or athletic? Where do you want to grow? And maybe it could be a word. Maybe it could be things that overlap in different areas. 
what do you want more of? What do you want less of? Um, how do you want to feel? How do you want to radiate? When you walk into a room, what do you want? What, what do you want to make sure people understand about you? And start to make lists. So it, it could be a word, it could be a sentence, it could be a phrase, but that's a really good place to start. And then meditate on it or think on it or when you're out for your run or when you're driving meditating doesn't need to be like um necessarily it just means taking the time to to give to that list and try to visualize yourself at the end of the year and what is it that you want to achieve what do you want to come true and you'll start to cross things off your list and say oh well you know that's not the most important or I already really do this or this is an area where I need to learn a lot more. And you'll start to see what, you know, you'll start to be able to narrow it down. Yeah. You could start to pull words, um, you know, pull words out of magazines <clears throat> or, you know, like open up a magazine and, and what words are sticking out to you. Try to use the clues from, from the universe to try to get some of them. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, if you narrow it down to about three and you sit on those three and you maybe have a conversation with somebody you love and trust, you'll you'll be able to figure it out. But I really think that the word that you end up choosing is going to evoke emotion within yeah, you. It'll be the one that's going to actually help you grow as a person. And I think at the end of the day, that's what we're all trying to do is find a word that we could focus on every day of the year or as much as you possibly can to help you grow as a person because if you grow the people around you are going to grow if the people around you are going to grow you're going to grow even more and if you're listening to this on december 31st great if you're listening to it on january 5th or 6th or 10th i'm not going to say what took you so long what i'm, <laughs> I'm going to say um you know it, it's not too late it's, it's okay even late. if it's february it's not too late um to create your word and just go through forward with it so Adam is really good at being really focused at making sure that what he's working on is very present. So what do you recommend to people once they've chosen their word? How do they make sure that it is around them all the time? There's a lot of different things that you could do. I mean, just making it around you physically. So whatever your word is, put it on your walls, put it on your mirrors, put it on your papers, put it in your phone, use a screensaver. There's so many ways to make that word pop up to you. And you just have to figure out what works best for you. Have sticky notes around your house. You like to do that. Just put whatever your word is. Sticky notes are all over the place. It could be in your car, in your kitchen, in your bathroom, open the fridge. Oh, there's a sticky note with your word on it. Just to continually remind you of that word to continually bring focus into what you're currently trying to achieve. And I'm a little bit more of the creative side. So I would say, can oh, you... Oh, I'm not. You, well, well no, you I'm are. Not. You That's are. Fine. But you're a little you're a little bit more linear. I would say, you know, can you sketch it out? Can you... <laughs> For those of you listening and not watching, he's making faces at me. Um, can you can you sketch it out? Can you paint it? Um, can you... I mean, you could create jewelry out of it um, and journaling about it. So, you know, I'm the type of person who might write over and over and over again, I am accountable, I am accountable, I am accountable, I am accountable in the present tense, not in the future tense. I mean, I am accountable, but I wanted it to be, you know, bigger, um, you know, and, and you could journal about it. And what does it mean when you're accountable? And what does that look like? And who do you want to be? Who do you have to be to be accountable? And who are you going to be at the end of the year after concentrating on accountable all the time? There's so many different ways to do it. And if you do it together as a family, so do you remember when we um, did that painting a couple of years ago where we yep. all chose a fruit yep. and we painted it and I'd really like to put you on the spot here on air. Do you think that we could, you know, during this car ride that we're going to, that, that we're having with the kids in ter for the winter break or the time that we're going to be spending with them, maybe we can all come up with our words and maybe we could all paint our words and we could hang it in our bathrooms or yep. hang it in our bedrooms so that we see it all the time. I think that that can be a really interesting activity or maybe the kids can come up with something that we can do to explain our words or... or We could all come up with our own words and we could all yeah. create a painting and, and talk about it and it's a family conversation and it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. It's an activity and a process that everybody can and should go through because it will just improve 
overall quality of life for everybody in the family. I know there's a car dealership that has everybody who works at the car dealership come up with their one word and they've actually not tattooed it, but what's the word they for They painted it on the they, car. They painted it on the they detailed it onto the car. <clears throat> um so when you walk in you see this car with everybody's words on it. And I think that there's a lot of impact and it could be very powerful as a family to do something similar. We could do it on a spatula. We could do it on anything. <laughs> Listen, there's so much we could talk about when it comes to one word or creating one word. But if you really want to go to the source and hear it from John Gordon, his book is called One Word That Will Change Your Life. And we'll put it in the show notes at planttrainers.com slash 337 so that you can grab that book, listen to the audio book or check out more from him. I don't know if you want to share your one word today with that. I don't know if you even thought about it, but uh, we can do that. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. I am not a hundred percent on my word yet, but where if I needed to commit it to paper today, my word would be positive positivity. Mm. So what I would like to do, and and again, I think a lot of people would say, but you are so positive. But I catch myself. I catch myself um, with negative self talk. I catch myself sometimes, and not around food, not around vegan or plant based lifestyle for other people, but I catch myself sometimes judging other people before I get there. And I just think that the more time I spend on positive and the less time I spend trying to unwind other people's negatives, I will be able to achieve my bigger dreams, my bigger goals, um, bigger possibility for myself. Yeah, and you like to listen to yourself. And one of the ways around listening to yourself is to talk to yourself. Because if you talk to yourself, you can't listen to yourself at the same time. So talking out positive comments, positive words in your head stops you from listening to the negative side of things and allows you to focus only on the positive. And John has a great book called The Positive Dog that you might want to check out because <laughs> that will surely be helpful uh, to you if your word is going to be positive. Okay, I will read that. Will you put that in the show notes? I will put that as in well. the show notes as well. So it's funny because I've started doing that recently. So I've heard Sage a couple of times say, Mommy, what are you talking about? And what I'm saying is, I'm making dinner. Or I like, I'm just kind of, you know, like, I'm like, oh, God, got to make dinner. No, nope, I'm making dinner. Mm. I'm feeding my family. And um, I'm saying it out loud and the kids are hearing me. <laughs> right. Now we had John Gordon on the podcast a while back and we'll put a link to that episode in the show notes as well. And if you're thinking, well, Adam, what's your word I before you close say, out? Adam, what is your word? Well, my word for 2020 is going to be service to serve. And I think that... Quite often I get caught up in focusing on myself and improving my own fitness or health or nutrition and I want to start leaning out away from myself and making myself even more available to others and helping to serve them and be present for them and allow myself to just give, give, give more than I get back. So my word for everybody around me, myself, is going to be to provide service. And that's just going to build off of the value that I've been providing. And I think in the end, with my grand purpose is to create an impact on everyone and everything that I do. So I feel that my word for 2020 is going to be to serve. And I think that's going to be a good one for me. I like that. That's a good one. Yeah. So in terms of serving, in terms of spreading, uh, spreading, what's my word? Positive. Positivity. It's a good <laughs> thing you forgot that already. <laughs> in terms of, you know, helping other people in terms of spreading positivity, we would like to offer you, our listeners, a 15 minute getting to know you conversation with Adam or myself, where we just want to help you, whether it's in terms of your health, whether in terms of your wealth, whether you're looking to podcast, whether you're looking to grow the plant-based movement, whether you just want to get to know the people behind the microphone. And if you're watching on YouTube, it's a pretty big microphone. Um, you know, we are going to open up to probably about 10 people. We'll see what comes in. And we would love to just hop on the phone with you, have a little conversation, get to know you, spread some love and joy your way and uh, see what it is that we can receive from you. So that's open to you. You can email us at info at planttrainers.com. And we will also put a link to that in the show notes. Yeah. And I think that's going to close out the show for today. 
Uh, it's a great way to end 2019, move into 2020 with amazing positivity and service. And hopefully you will enjoy this episode and keep coming back because we have a lot more lined up for 2020, five years running, and we're still Woo-hoo. going, still going strong. And there's a lot more great episodes to come on the Plant Trainers podcast. So have a great 2020, have a safe, healthy, happy new year, and we'll catch you soon. Happy new year, everyone.